Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. And if this video hits 1500 likes in 24 hours, we're giving away 250 XRP. So make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed and make sure you comment something down below because that's the easiest way to enter. XRP investors take legal action after Ripple charges. Guys, I've been thinking about this for a little while. The XRP community is really not giving up. Honestly, guys, I think as of this point, it really feels like a personal type of attack against Ripple, against innovation, against the fact that XRP holders want to make money with this because really the whole lawsuit here, after reviewing it for days now, it just doesn't make real sense. Now let's read this really quickly. XRP investors have filed a petition against the SEC claiming irreparable harm. Once more, the SEC is not doing this for investor protection because they caused way more harm. The petitioners think the SEC is not looking out for investor interest by declaring XRP a security. Once more, respect that. I, I respect that completely. And also what I think about is right now the XRP community really can potentially, with their letter, which came out just now, actually change lives. That's one thing because XRP might be allowed because of this letter, but also can really fight the corruption and actually change the whole course of crypto. And it's only this morning since I talked thought about that. I was like, man, these guys with their single letter could actually have so much done if it's been given some attention. Even if it doesn't get any attention from the SEC themselves, at least if we keep sharing this, if we keep talking about this, the public will know. And all the people that have invested in XRP or in crypto whatsoever or, or thinking about it might look at it and be like, hey, what is the SEC doing? Hopefully pretty soon here it gets some real media attention that the SEC is being sued because they've gotten sued so many times before. You guys ask me in the comment section, has the SEC been sued before? Yes, the SEC loses a lot of its lawsuits that they get against them because basically the SEC is a body that cannot make any rules themselves. They have to do this through lawsuits and what happens is they often win but they really kind of did it prematurely where they just kind of filed for something they won because it kind of looks logical. However, the facts come up a little bit later where they're like, well, what you said, what your morals were, everything like that, it wasn't really on the right place. So for example, right now, they are suing Ripple for scamming, basically. Let's just call it that quickly, easily. 1.3 billion. Eventually, some counter lawsuit may come from Ripple even or from others affected by this to just show, hey, you know, you did this to get investors you know their money's worth or basically to stop prevent you know, to, to prevent people from losing money however you caused so much more damage and you will keep causing damage by doing this that is actually literally the opposite of what you claim to do which they might even win once more so that's why i'm always saying if the sec wins right now it's not even the end of things it's just going to be the temporary end of things even though ripple would move and ultimately it wouldn't do much for xrp except for lose the price a little bit and allow a lot of us investors to not be able to hold it anymore even though they really want it without maybe even having anything to do with ripple i just really feel personal opinion by the way that this will just in the end of things be good hence i'm still holding xrp as i'm pretty excited for them However, as we've noticed, in terms of price, it may not be the best decision, as a lot of other coins have actually outperformed XRP by a ton, which is why I diversify, like I've said a little bit earlier today. XRP has dropped by over 50% in value since the SEC charged against Ripple Labs and its two executives. It's also funny to see how XRP could have been at, you know, $1.50 right now, had the SEC not done that, because Ethereum has already pumped 50% that we know. If Ethereum does that, XRP could have pumped way more because of all the uh, congestion in Ethereum. Bitcoin Bull says those waiting to buy the dip will fuel the 50k to 100k pump. It's pretty funny. I was talking about this the other day. Oh no, even today it was. Where I was talking about, I think that a lot of these guys are waiting to buy Bitcoin at a cheaper price, right? They're waiting to buy Bitcoin at, for example, right around this area, 24,000, maybe even below 16,000 or something like that. I do not really know exactly what they're waiting for. But at, to me, at least, it's pretty funny to see how those guys who are waiting for the dump might actually pump it up way more because, well, once it hits 50K, they're going to be like, ah, you know, I got to get in, I got to get in, I got to get in. And that's all of a sudden where the real big stuff is going to be happening. And 50K is mostly a big psychological barrier where a lot of guys will pop back in. Same for 25K, which we just saw it pump towards 33 or so K for. 
So yeah, I, I definitely do agree with this little idea that at around that price, 50K, a ton of other guys are gonna be coming in if we did not see a pullback before. Even if we do actually see a pullback, most likely we'll still see a lot of people buy around that area. Then Doge, man, Dogecoin hit a huge valuation just now. Let me quickly actually get this going. Can I open the site then, please? Dogecoin hit one cent. Will it hit a dollar in 2021? So I'm person. Ah, oh, my head. Oh, my freaking headphones. Oh, 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 this sound was so extremely loud. You guys cannot hear it, I think. But oh, my headphones just got blasted. Whew. Basically, I do not think Dogecoin really has fundamentals. Uh, if you're looking at the real, you know, the real um, fundamentals, it's not even a bad coin. It's just not being developed anymore, and it's basically just a meme coin, which is a pump and dump type of situation. Because uh. <laughs> Uh, I think people are just, you know, doing this purely for the fun of it. Yet, if you're looking at the real idea behind what Doge is supposed to do or anything like that, yeah, it doesn't make any sense for it to pump. I definitely wouldn't recommend anybody to purchase it. Uh, however, that's not my place, right? If you want to buy it, go right on ahead. I buy a lot of crazy things too. I buy GSX. I've told you guys about that one. Even though once more, none of this is financial advice. Again, I'm not certain things will do well. I put a couple thousand dollars into this. Right now, it's actually a little bit more than uh, I thought that I put in. I, I put in a little bit more. Why? Well, mostly because I think, hey, this is a good chance to get myself a huge ROI if things turn out to be well. Um, and I'm like, why not? Why not try it? Why not go for it? Why not just put some money into some different projects? Because if what they say is completely true, which as of this point, it kind of looks like, this might bring me a lot of money. So uh, I'm trying it out, and we'll see what happens, guys. Once more, you have a 5% bonus for using my link. 5% goes to me, I think. Uh, there's other bonuses for buying huge amounts, which once more, you got to check out. Again, be careful with your money. And there's a 23% bonus for buying right now, which goes down every couple of days. It goes like to 22, 21, and so forth and so on. Dan Rocky over on Twitter said, People who decided to hold XRP in 2021 will feel despair and dejection now, but will end up with the last laugh. Let's hope. Let's really hope. Once more, guys, diversify if you want to. Uh, at least if you think that's the proper financial decision, which I do think it is, make sure you diversify. And lost Bitcoin. I sometimes also think about the scarcity in cryptocurrencies where it's like Bitcoin really doesn't even have that much liquidity to it. You guys think about that sometimes too? Liquidity for Bitcoin is almost dried up because 3.7 million Bitcoin are probably gone forever, which is around 20% of the currently minted Bitcoin. Worth a small fortune are gone forever and can never be retrieved. Here's where they went, which is basically just wrong um, transactions to wrong addresses, for example, or burned or just plain forgotten, removing these coins from circulations. Forgotten is, is really a difficult one because it could be like, for example, I, right? I had bought Bitcoin in 2000, oh, what's going to be 12, 13? I don't know, uh, to buy some stuff of the, <laughs> to buy some stuff. Let's just keep it at that. Um, however, Wait, I hope, by the way, that I'm not using the wrong mic. Ooh, I actually got to check that a little bit later because I have a headset mic and I hope I'm using the right. Let me test. I hope you heard that really loud. I hope I'm using that mic because that's my uh, good mic. If I'm using that mic, that wouldn't be good. Uh, we'll see in a little second. It could even be the MacBook mic where you don't hear me at all. <laughs> that would be very bad. I, I hope not, guys. I hope you guys can hear me. But, uh... Yeah, something that scarcity takes takes in for me. And also, I bought Bitcoin way, way back, and I definitely forgot about how to access it or what type of wallet I had it on. I opened my laptop, which I bought it at, uh, at, at the point or at that time. However, I had no idea. I checked my history on the, the internet, of course. Couldn't really find anything because, well, it's 10 years, no, nah, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago. I don't remember. And I couldn't find anything about that. And I've reset my computer in the meantime already as well. So I couldn't find any program which I had the, the coins on. And because it's such a long time ago, I can just not remember what type of platform my money was on. I can just not remember. I cannot even remember how I bought cryptocurrency at the time. I have no idea. But yet that money is lost. However, it could theoretically, theoretically be that I find it at one point or another. Not going to happen. I'm not counting on it. But it could be. And from that perspective, it's very difficult to say whether or not something is really lost or just... Um, really not being used at the time. However, all the money that's being sent to addresses which, you know, will never exist, yeah, that is definitely lost. However, sometimes I do also wonder how it would work 
if there's actually somebody who has the address who just does not know about it quite yet, right? For example, let's say I had 100,000 Bitcoin addresses and somebody was already sent to one of my public keys and I just never checked it, what then? Could also be, right? And that's sometimes actually something I think about. What if you just keep making addresses? If you have like an address generator and then um, after like five years you come back and all of a sudden there's like $2 million deposited because people just made faulty transactions, what then? It would be pretty funny. How do you pay taxes on that? I don't know. Inventor of Cardano replies to IOTA, co-founder about partnership. The inventor of Cardano and the co-founder of IOTA will coordinate po cooperations to build a bridge between their platforms. Hoskinson celebrates 12 years since the creation of the first block in the Bitcoin network, and it's already been so long. 12 years? No, that's crazy. I still have this ledger here from the 10-year anniversary. Which is already crazy. I've been doing this YouTube thing for almost four years now, guys. Crypto YouTube, almost four years. Congratulations. Let's let's drink on that a little bit later. <laughs> no, not doing that. Not doing that. But pretty cool, right? And also, these partnerships may be actually more common as time goes on as well. I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen in terms of all these mergers. And then Bitcoin smashes 34.8k as markets see some serious and prolonged investor activity. I think the big guys are finally stepping in, guys. And there's almost no. No question in my mind anymore that this is forever, but um, hey, that's just my opinion on these situations. What do you guys think, though? Do you guys think there's also some severity behind all these moves and that these guys are really starting to pick it up for sure now? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe, and I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, and have a very juicy, jolly, wally, good old day, everybody.